Coach Rabel, Coach Rabel mentioned his message this week, talking to the players about individually what they can do to lift the spirits up of the team. What did you kind of take away from that? Have you seen that a little bit this week? Yeah, everyone's got to do their part, right? Uh, this is not uh, the streak we want to be on, and we all understand that. And there's certain emotions that come with that, frustrations, angers, um, all those types of things. But everyone's got to do their part. Uh, can't just be just a few guys. We all kind of got to buy in and, and do our part to, like I said, after the game, channeling that, that emotion into a positive way and being able to, uh, to lift up the guys around you and um, you know, be better this week. You said that this game, or the streak, after losing that game is going to show like what this team is truly made of. In your opinion, like what is this team's true character? I mean, we've shown character. Uh, just the way the guys have responded today so far. Um, came in with energy, with focus. Um, you know, we're hungry to, to get back on the right track. Hungry to do things the way we want to do it. And you know, we did a lot of good things in that game. We shot ourselves in the foot too many times. You know, so got to clean those things up, build on the things we did well, and, and eliminate the stuff. You know, that ultimately got us beat. Outside of a sideline moment over a, a call or a mistake or anything, do you, have you seen him angry much? Does he get angry much? Who is too Graves? Uh, yeah, he gets angry. <laughs> 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 um, you know, I think I've seen a lot of growth, growth in him, and um, you know, his his body language and demeanor has been. Um, has been good. So, uh, you know, he kind of sets the tone with, with how everything goes. People look to him just being in the position that he is a lot like they look to me. Um, and I think he's conscious of that. So seen a lot of growth from him in that area and um, positivity, you know, when, when things haven't been going well. And I think it makes a big impact on how our guys respond on the sideline. The anger, so the anger hasn't come out so much during these three games? <laughs> at, at least not into a, uh, into a visible way. Obviously, he's pissed. Everyone's pissed, right? When, when things aren't going well, um, you put so much time and effort and, and energy into it, uh, everyone gets angry, right? And I think it's how you, you take a second, you are angry, but then you're able to, to reel it back in and focus on making the corrections as opposed to just being you know, ticked off at everything that's happening. So you know, it goes to everybody, not just him, not just me, but everyone on our team. You know, there's going to be mistakes. You're allowed to, to get you know, pissed off for a second there, but um, got to be able to, to reel it back in and channel that energy in a good way. What's it like? To, how do you keep your fundamentals together when you're hurting and you're under constant duress like you've been the last few weeks? Oh, uh, it's tougher, right? It's tougher just the nature of, of the injuries and uh, what you're allowed to, or not allowed, but what you're able to do, you know, in practice, in games. You know, it's definitely tougher, but you know, hopefully uh, as it continues to heal and get better, can, uh, can keep working on those things. Have you been happy with that, with yourself, your ability to, to keep that together? Yeah, do, doing the best I can. You know, I think uh, it's a balancing act there of, of trying to do as much as you can and, and work the things as much as you can. Um, but when, when you're banged up, your body's only able to do so much. So I think, you know, that's not just myself. That's everybody on this team, right? We're all dealing with something to some degree, um, anybody who's played for us, you know. So uh, being able to, uh, to work, everyone's on a different plan. Everyone has different things they're trying to work on and are able to work on. Just being able to do that on a daily basis and ultimately carry it over to the games. Fair to you say, Ryan. Side of that, but on the other side, actually in the game, like you're under duress all the time. How are you managing to keep your techniques and fundamentals in order to be able to do your job when you're constantly under duress? Yeah, just focus on the task at hand, the job. You know, I think um, you can't really worry too much about what's going on uh, in front of you or around you. You got to be able to, you know, try to move as best you can. Um, within the pocket and, and deliver the football in an accurate and timely fashion. Right, the offense has done a good job starting games, going down the field, getting touchdowns, and then something happens or seems to happen in the second half, uh, the scoring droughts, and, and et cetera. Is, can, in looking at film, is there anything that explains it, or is it just you know things break down here and there no matter how hard you guys have been trying to clean things up? I think it's different game by game. Uh, you know, look at this past game. You know, we, uh, we had really one possession, and then we got down three scores by, by our first possession in the second half. So that kind of changed the whole, the whole way you had to approach that, the second half of that game. So um, yeah, definitely not, don't want to be in positions like that and are able to, to play a game our style uh, and not be behind like that. So, you know, every game's different, but, you know, there, there's, you know, something to not getting behind like that, being more efficient, not turning the ball over in the first half is going to allow us to, you know, play our game in the second half. To say those the, the first possessions of each half can kind of set the tone, or, or is that an overstatement? Just on one possession. Uh, you know, if it's good, you like to build on it, and if it's bad, you have to be able to take a step back and wash it away. You know, I think um, 
that's what it comes down to. There's going to be good plays, there's going to be bad plays, whether it's within a drive or a series. Um, you know, sometimes one play can, can stop a drive, you know what I mean, whether it's a penalty or a negative play. Um, sometimes if it's an early down, you might be able to overcome it and, and keep going, you know, and, and the same thing goes with, with drives. You know, you, you have a, a drive, you get stopped, you come to the sideline, you make the adjustments, and they come out ready to go, you know, the next drive. If, if you're able to, to, you know, to move the ball efficiently and go down and score, then you want to build on that, keep that momentum going. So, you know, that's what the game is. It's, it's about, you know, being able to build on momentum uh, when you have it, and when you don't have it, being able to, to make enough plays to get it back and, and go from there. When you see, you know, you watch the film and you say, well, maybe, maybe if we had done this or maybe this is not that bad, I mean, is it maybe not as bad as it seems in terms of what's going on right now, or is that not reality of being able to just say, this is, this is going wrong for us and it's got to get fixed? Yeah, there's a lot of good things. You know, we looked at that tape uh, in the first half. We did a lot of things really well. You know, we were running the football. We were efficient in the pass game. Um, we strung together drives. We were able to move the ball efficiently, get points. Um, you know, got points on the first drive. Had the hiccup in the second drive. Went down and got another touchdown. You know, the third drive. So um, we were moving the ball again before we had another turnover. So before half, we were moving the ball efficiently in a two-minute. Uh, right before half, we're inside scoring zone there, and, and the ball came out again. So uh, we're doing a lot of good things. Uh, ultimately, uh, what, what killed us was the turnover. So uh, that's something that, that we know. Going into each and every game, you know, a lot like red zone, a lot like third down. Like there's, there's critical points in the game, and and ball security is, is a critical facet of the game that um, we're conscious of and, and put a lot of emphasis of, and, and just have to be better at. What do you think about Chick when he first got here? Maybe what's impressed you the most about him during his rookie season? He just comes to work every day, and and he seems to take advantage of, of every opportunity he gets. You know, I think that's something that jumps out is, you know, from early in the season, you know, got him the ball a few times and I said, hey, we got to get this guy the ball more. You know, it just seems like, um, you know, he's hard to bring down. He's physical. Uh, he catches the ball extremely well. He, he plays fast. Uh, he has everything you look for in, in, a, in a receiving and, and pass threat. So um, just just building on, on those good things he's done. We've seen his, his um, role grow as the season's gone on and, um, you know, just want to keep him improving in the right direction. What stands out to you the most about this Chargers defense? Uh, you look at the way they played last week. They played extremely well. You know, I think that's something that j jumped off the tape was, um, you know, the disruptive in the in the pass game, uh, kind of really limited the run game uh, of the Dolphins. So um, they're they're playing good right now. We're gonna have to go out. and We're gonna have to execute. You know, um, whatever the case may be, whether it's running the football, you know, being efficient, being able to build on the good things we did last week in the first half. You know, and um, when we get opportunities in the pass game, being able to take advantage of. Does those time differences ever make a difference for, for you personally? I know every player kind of has their own opinion on that. The Braves said you're not going to leave any earlier. It's going to be the same kind of routine. Yeah, I don't think it does, especially from, from the central time zone. You know, I think, um, you know, playing a, I guess what would be a 3.30 game, you know, it's not, not wild. You know, I think maybe if it was a, a night game out there, if it was a 7 o'clock kick or something like that, which would be, you know, a lot later for us, maybe that can have an effect. But, you know, being a, being a daytime kick, I don't think it really affects anything. You guys are always focused one game at a time and the task at hand, but when you go down a stretch like this and you lose a division game, can it be difficult to not look in the rearview mirror a little bit to where you're at in the division and the state of things? Yeah, I mean, you look at you look at what's happened and, and you want to uh, to get out of it. You know, I think it's you're not blind to, you know, what has happened in the past few weeks. You, you look at it for what it is and. Uh, want to get the ball going in the right direction, and then the way to do that is to go out and play well and get a win against the uh, the Chargers this week. How much, I guess on the flip side of that, I mean, how much are you pointing to? Hey, despite how maybe bad things have been of late, we're still in a position to win the division, do everything we wanted to do. I mean, how much are you pushing that message this week? Yeah, everything everything we want is still right in front of us. Obviously, uh, you want to get hot at the right time, and and this is the the end of the year, right? This is the point where we want to start getting hot. You know, um, you know, as the, as the season finishes, so uh, gotta gotta start stacking things in the positive way and, and moving things in the right direction, and um, ultimately gotta start that out by getting a win this week. What have you learned about Robert Woods this year, Ryan, and maybe how has your kind of relationship sort of grown? You know, on the field chemistry on yeah. the field. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited to get to play with Robert, and he's a he's a fun guy to play with. Uh, you look at how he played this last game and how he's he's kind of bought into what we do here. You know, blocking physically. You know, I. Um, just 
was was enjoying watching him on tape. Just the way he was he was uh, physical in his blocks. He's getting in there. He's he's throwing his stuff around and, and making an impact on things that aren't glorified, right? No, no one uh, no one's giving shout outs uh, in the media or whatever social media for for blocking. But uh, it's something that we put a lot of emphasis on, and and I respect the hell out of a guy who's going to go in there and and throw his nose in there and um, and do the dirty work for us. Um, you know, especially a veteran player like he has, who's accomplished a lot in this league, and uh, you know he has a good feel for what we're doing. He's making plays for us in the past game, and uh, you know that's something that jumped out for me last week. Was uh, a guy, a veteran guy like him, you know, going in there and throwing it around. Just taking a flyer here. When you were coming out of high school in Texas, did you ever visit Texas Tech, or did you ever have any reason to uh, cross paths with Mike Leach? I know you have a, I think I read somewhere you were a Texas Tech fan growing up. I mean, did you admire him from afar? Did you ever meet him? Kind of what are your thoughts on him? Yeah, I met him briefly. You know, I grew up a Texas Tech fan. My, both my parents graduated from Texas Tech. Uh, grew up going to their games several games a year. You know, it was 90 miles up the road. So, um, grew up going to Texas Tech games. I wanted to get recruited by Tech, uh, but it wasn't the cards. You know, I was a uh, I was a wing T guy. As offense, we were wing T. Um, my last couple of years, and obviously, you know, Leach was a spread it out and air it out kind of guy. Um, but you know, that offer never came. But I went up there for a camp and and was able to talk with him for just briefly. Uh, but he accomplished a lot, right? You look at a guy who um, coach of the year for his conference multiple times over the course of his career, uh, successful pretty much everywhere he went. So uh, a guy who uh, did it a different way than, than the norm, I would say. You know, just his mannerisms and the way he went about things was a little bit different than, than the norm, but effective and had success doing it. Mike, your team has done a good job of, of starting games, going down, getting touchdowns. Uh, what has to start happening to get that to translate into more scoring in the second half after you come out of the locker room? Well, all the fundamentals that we talk about, I think that, um, you know, understanding that you know, we're, we're, we're just going to have to make sure that we get into drives, you know, and just unfortunately recently uh, the, the case has been just some self-inflicted wounds and, uh, you know, I thought we answered, again, we've been through this. I thought we answered well um, last week. Uh, unfortunate, you know, that uh, we weren't able to answer when our defense needed us. You know, going back to the fundamentals, taking care of the football, you know, really just striving to keep this rhythm and the flow uh, that's been there, you know, at times. And again, not having this roller coaster of, of, of having a good drive or then doing something, you know, that, that you know, affects that and then really letting it affect the rest of the, the game. You know, they're going to make some plays. They're going to get some stops. You know, we have to go right back out whenever we get the ball uh, and, and get back and find that rhythm. How does Eckler's ability to catch passes sideline to sideline stress your defense? Uh, it's just, you know, it's, they do a lot with him. And he's just an ultimate um, outlet. It seems like when he needs to sit down in the zone, he's sitting down when he needs to continue to run. He continues to stay on the move. The quarterback knows where he is. You know, they have a lot that's designed for him, but they are also a lot that is just, you know, the, the relief and, and the outlet and, and the check down. And, um, you know, he does a fantastic job with, with the plays that are designed for him as well as the ones that, you know, get to him after the quarterback's progressed. Size and strength at the receiver position, even tied in challenge uh, guys in the secondary. Well, I think they have some guys with different skill sets, and, and certainly they do have um, a stature. You know, I think obviously with Williams, Keenan Allen, you know, Palmer, um, you know, Carter's, you know, a guy that can kind of, you know, play a lot of different roles. He's not just a gadget guy, a guy that runs, you know, multitude of routes. Uh, it seems like, you know, Everett's been factoring and, and really gaining a lot of confidence. Getting back to some of those self-inflicted wounds, false starts. Obviously, there's there's different ones, but false starts with the offensive line. Like, what are you guys doing to get better in that department and just get that Trying offensive to tell, line? You know what I mean? Tell, tell Nick to wait for the ball to snap. I mean, I think Nick's leading the league. So, focusing. Um, you know, again, it's not always um, – and, and it's not just Nick. I just know that he's got, got the majority of them, I think. Um, you know, sometimes in our zest to get them, we get ourselves. We've, we've been okay, I would say, trying to handle the road environment, which is crazy. 
you know, when we're on a silent, I think we're locked in. And um, so sometimes when when Ryan, you know, has a voice inflection or things happen, you know, just have to make sure that we're focused in and, you know, we continue to practice those things. We we work on a cadence when we condition, when we run. You'll see us do that again today. Uh, we echo the call, um, ask them to do all that. Reminders if the, you know, sometimes the, the cadence changes at the line of scrimmage. We ask those guys from inside out to, to echo that. You know, just a lot of different things. You've been a big op- a proponent of attention to detail in terms of making sure that guys know exactly what to do. Has there been any drop off in that in recent weeks as you've gone through this little rough patch? Well, I mean, I think you look at all those all those things, and you know whether it, you know, that's tied into performance. Um, you know, different different parts. I mean, I don't think we've had you know busts. I don't think there have been a lot of egregious busts, but I do think that the details can always improve. I, we try to ask them to to work through those things at each and every position. Uh, what they may be, uh, I, I think they can always be better. I think understanding you know, what they're in, what we're in, and, and trying to improve that way and uh, how your job may change based on uh, the look that they give us or the, the coverage that they're in or the, the, the formation that they're in offensively. West, since you've been here, do, do you change – Anything during the week as far as schedules or travel or anything like that? Or do you, or do you just kind of do your best to ignore Try it? Try to just show up and play well, you know, coach well. I mean, we went out early, I think, in Seattle. We don't think we'll do that now. It's a little longer flight to Seattle. We'll try to leave normal time, try to get in, you know, what would be 4.30 or 5. I think try to stay consistent to whatever time zone that we're on, get some rest and, and get up and, you know, treat it like a 325 game. Did that bother you as a player at all? Or, you know, did, did you find you had to adjust as a player uh, when, when you went out? Um, I mean, we had the double week one time where we stayed out there because we had two games out there back to back. But other than that, I don't really recall having it be too much of, of an issue. Watching Staley's teams this year, he's shown propensity to, to be kind of a go for it guy. I, I think in some fourth down situations, does that change how you prepare? Well, for I think we always have to be um, kind of aware, especially, you know, you get around the 50 yard line or, you know, you're inside the, the five, you know, they had Miami third and 21, whatever it was, third and goal from the 21 and they got it down to the one yard line on a screen, you know, they went for it. A very similar situation to us. They scored right before half and, um, you know, give them a lot of credit for executing that situation and getting down there and, and going forward and scoring. So, it, you know, when you get past the 50 and you're in that fringe field goal range, you know, there, there's a propensity that we have to be ready to defend, you know, two downs. And you know, we've had other, you know, teams with that, that philosophy as well. That seems to be the, the kind of the trend. What's Traylon's status in the protocol? Still in protocol. I don't. There's only. There's only two. Um, yeah, there, it's either in or you're out. You know, what I mean, and I can't really comment on, you know, where where he's at other than still in. Is he in the right practice? No, there's just still the in the protocol or out of protocol. Trey Avery still in the same situation. Still in protocol. And, and what's, what's the key for a guy coming off injured reserve to be able to kind of hit the ground running and be successful? And how, how much you're hoping maybe that kind of game could do that for you this week? Well, I think that that starts with one their 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 effort, you know, the individual players' effort to to get back, uh, to to work hard, to to be engaged in the rehab, uh, to strain through that process, and then once we feel like he gets close, we we enter him back into uh, meetings. You know, they're on a different schedule when they're not in in that meetings when they're you know still three weeks away or four weeks away. Um, then, then they start, you know, then the, then the work that they do with, with, with Frank and, and Brian Bell, you know, I think B. Bell does a fantastic job with that return to play uh, before they get on to the practice field. He tries to, to meet and understand what, our, what he's going to have to do, what that player is going to have to do. He meets with our coaches uh, about drills that they may have to do once they're back and, and movements. So then they work there. Uh, and, and then we, 
you know, when the op window opens up, then we make a decision and they start to practice. So I think conditioning uh, is, is a large part of it as well. We talked about that last week with Racy uh, and, and Josh. Both those players did, did really well on their return. So, you know, we'll see where Zach is. With the limit on IR recalls and, and Ola's ultimate fate, uh, is that one that maybe you'd, you'd like to have back? No. With these final four games, and you mentioned wanting to roll into the playoffs, you know, on a high note, what is it? about this group of guys that you feel, you know, gives you the confidence that you guys can do that? Well, I just enjoy the way they come to work. You know, I think we're all disappointed Monday. Uh, the volume, again, around the building on Tuesday of guys came in to work and, you know, lift or get treatment, um, check in with their coaches, whatever they had to do or wanted to do. Uh, and then I think the way that we started Wednesday and started today, you know, start the process over. And, you know, that, that's twofold. That goes for, for me, the coaches, you know, the players, you know, it was long days after you lose, and you got to try to get back going. And, and I think the biggest thing for me is, is when the players are here. With Herbert's arm, his arm strength, is he a guy that when he extends the plays to that he'll try to he'll put a ball in places maybe that uh, a lot of other guys wouldn't try? And how much do you have to guard against that? I mean, I don't really. You know, I mean, I think the arm talent is fantastic. I think the ability to move and uh, extend plays. You know, I saw a stat where he. I think has had the most yardage outside the pocket the other night than any quarterback in the league. I think he had 150 yards outside the pocket, whether that's design plays for him to get out there or he's getting out there himself on third down, um, looking to throw but can run, um, can you know put it anywhere. So puts a lot of stress on you as guys start to uncover, whether that's uh, on the field or in the red zone. Like you hear coaches say that you gotta, it's easier to teach lessons when you're winning. When, you, when you're losing, do you find yourself being more, more positive, I guess, to try to, uh, to try to get it turned around? Well, I mean, I think that, that we all understand. You know, I mean, it's professional football, and, and I think you have to be consistent. You know, I try to coach the, the action and, and not the result. I, I really do. Whether uh, we win or we lose, I try to coach uh, things that come up in the game that, that have to be improved. Uh, things that I recognize that are, that we did well, um, you know, and I think by what I mean is, you know, if if you if you give up contain or something and, and you make a play, you still have to recognize, say, hey, you know, the next time that that's going to be a huge, huge gain. That, that quarterback that can scramble is going to be out of there. Uh, there's an element to yeah, making a play, but you know, sometimes just because you the, the play was favorable you may have not necessarily done your job. And so I try to use those examples to them and saying, you know, whether we win or lose, there's going to be things that we're going to have to have to improve. And then the things that we have to eliminate, such as the turnovers or the, you know, the, the poor situational football at the end of the half, you know, not affecting the quarterback, things that, that we know will get us beat. You know, potential return mean to you guys, especially given the experience at, at that position there? Uh, you know, Zach's played a lot of football, and he's done some good things for us. And we'll just try to get him back and see how he does and progresses through the week at practice. Coach, you mentioned you talked about the team being at a crossroads last week, and also the team deciding to finish out the season, what team they want to be, how they want to finish. A similar message this week from you to the team, or something different as you go to LA? Well, I mean, I think the message this week is obviously, you know, um, you know, we talked about. You know what we can do individually to then lift the spirits of of the team and and the guys around us, and try to focus on our demeanor, our attitude, uh, how we approach uh, each and every meeting, the reps, the, the practice reps, the individual period, and you know in turn hoping you know that that will that will help the the entire group. So that that's where our focus is, um, you know, and just try to you know prepare to to win a game and what we think is important this week. Uh, you know, he may do some stuff today. Uh, he may be out there in a, in a you know, limited basis today. So hopefully we'll see how, you know, he's feeling. 